a good players, good players playing at a high level. This is a championship ready team. I've been saying it for three years now, and it's just not talk. They are ready. They got they got everything. Uh, they just got to do it. But they 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 were on all clicking. They were clicking. They had these last two games. They had to play well um, to beat us. Uh, we you know they jumped on us. We cut the lead to five. Thought we had a couple of possessions. I thought Rui on the one we cut the five. He had a slot three wide open, and he, we got called for a traveling. But we battled. We we fought. Like I said, this is a very very good team. Any mistake that you make on Giannis, he capitalizes it himself with his athleticism and his length, and he, they just throw it up there. And we there's no nothing we can do about it. He's so long, and if we don't put a body on him, he, he gets a runway, and you're not going to be able to jump as high as he he can jump in. But we battled. We we I like I like the spirit that we play with the last couple of games. We just got to keep doing it, and we're going to get rewarded with uh, with the win. And how did Davis look to you? Uh, he struggled. He struggled. Ava, physically though. Sorry, physically. Go ahead, Chase. What's that? Uh, how did he look physically? No, uh, he was moving around pretty good. He bumped knees tonight. That probably um, he labored a little bit, but it wasn't his calf. His calf felt good. Uh, he hit knees on knees, but you know that's part of basketball. You you collide, you bump into people. Uh, he's gonna he he he'll get better. He'll be better. Hit one hit one big shot for us that we needed on the right right corner in front of our bench. But Ava, um, Scott, sometimes you guys talk about needing more offense from other players and everything tonight you got it from Rui how do you kind of I guess account for what do you see when you're getting the individual performances but things aren't coming together when you need them or in the way that you need them to? yeah I mean we knew we knew going into this stretch of games we after the break um I was hoping to we would come out with some wins but we knew we would have to play really well uh we got well, the three games, Memphis is always tough to beat. And, but the other three games, they're the best teams in the East. And they both have a chance. And I like the way Rui, Rui came back. He's had a couple of, you know, five or five, four or five games before these last two that things weren't things weren't going for him. And we needed him to, to step up. And he did. He had a great game last a uh, couple of nights ago. And he bounced back and, and played another fine game against a very, I mean, against MVP. And that's a, that's growth, coming back, not being satisfied, coming back and, and playing hard and putting yourself in a position. You got 18 shots and we're not running more offense for him. He's just putting himself in the position to not hesitate, not pass up. And that's what happens. And we need, we need a third, we need the third score. TB is is out all year, but he's a guy that can step in and give us 17 to 20 points any night. Is it harder to kind of drill down the lessons from Saturday's game and the good things that you guys did when you're not rewarded with a win at the end of that? Does that play into that at all? Yeah, I mean, we talked about, we did a lot of good things last game. They had to play a high level game to beat us and, and they did, and they had to come back and do it again. Uh, and we were changing lineups and trying to create a, a spark and we were running in mud, you know, for two and a half quarters. Uh, then we went super small and we kind of changed our mojo and we, we gave ourselves a chance and we don't want to do that. We want to, you know, Brad didn't get a break until the last minute of the, of the, of the half, but we need to, we need to have some guys step up and, you know, I, and they will next game. we got another opportunity come against Sacramento. Uh, but we need other guys. We need our bench to come in and, and play better. Uh, but they're going to get opportunities. Kellen. Hey, Scott. It seems like, you know, several times this season, the team has fallen in like a double digit deficit, but then made a run to cut, cut into a lead, if not win the, the game. Like, why, I guess, why has that happened so often this season? And how emotionally draining is it to you know, fall behind so much and then catch up? Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough. It's definitely tough. I thought this, the, third, the third quarter we came out, um, this, team is, this team is good. We came out flat. We missed some easy shots. We didn't, we didn't protect the rim. 
We went small, and then they they pick on you. They know this team's a veteran team. They see a they see a matchup, they go at it, and they make you uh, change change your coverage or change your change your player. And that's what they do. They got veteran players. They know how to play. They can read things on the fly. They're not teaching anything. They're just going out there playing with their all their instincts and all their experience that they've had. This team has major major league experience. Probably, you know, over 50 years in that in that starting lineup. Uh, but you have to be able to manage that. And I thought they were I thought they were going out a couple of guys, uh, but th we have to be able to step up and and challenge yourself to get a stop. But they are I mean, they're all star players. They're good players. And it's hard like any any slight mistake. Uh, they capitalize as good as any team in the league. And kind of just building off uh, uh Ava's question, is it more deflating when you're cut into the lead and you come close to, you know, uh, potentially winning a game to lose that? Is it more deflating when you lose those type of games? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's no fun losing. Uh, there's, no, there's no C's or B's like I used to always get. You either get an A or you get an F. And when you lose, it's an F. And that's how that's how I that's how I think of uh, competition. Every day I want to win practice. Every day I want to win a film session. Every day I want to win a, win a game. And when you don't win it, you feel like crap. And you don't go, you go home and you don't sleep. You figure out ways to to beat yourself up and criticize yourself. And then you look at ways that your your team can get better. And you and you come back up and you and you and you find a way to battle back and. And step up and enjoy what you do and be passionate about what you do and care about what you do and love what you do and and find enough energy and love for the game the next day. And I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'm going to be miserable until I wake up and I'm going to love my my opportunity to get this team better. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to get better tomorrow um, and then come back against Sacramento. And then we got Utah and then we know what we have to do after that on the road. Um, it's part of being in, in, in competition. You get 45, you get 48 minutes to decide if either you win or you lose. And when you don't, you want a team that doesn't feel good about themselves. And I, I like the team that I have. They don't feel good. I've been on teams when you lose, you just go to the next game. When you lose, you go to the next game. And then every two weeks you get paid. Uh, we don't, we're not like that. We work every day. We got some experience that we're gaining every day, guys need it and they're getting it and it's, it's gonna pay off. I trust it and I trust their work and I can't wait to, to see us keep improving every day. Thanks, Scott. You didn't expect that long answer, did you? Not really, but thank you. Zach. Don't ask for a follow-up then. <laughs> hey coach, uh, Rui ended up with a career high four three-pointers made tonight. What did you yeah. think of the way he just kept shooting those threes today? I love it. I love it. We need, I mean, we need threes. It's hard. It's hard. I mean, we know we're one of the, we're not, you know, statistically, I'm not saying that we are because I think we're better. I think we're a better three point shooter, but the numbers do state that we don't shoot a, enough of them. We don't make enough of them. Um, but I think when Rui steps up and, you know, four for nine, uh, who would have ever thought, um, when we drafted him that before his 82nd game that he had take nine threes in an NBA game. I'm sure Coach Few didn't think he would do that. Um, but he's done that through the work that he's put in. Uh, our coaches work with him. Corey works with him every day. And we need that. If teams are going to drop off, you got to be able to step up and make those shots. And he can make – he can have bigger nights than this. There's going to be nights that he's going to make, you know, by the time, you know, in another year or two he's going to make – eight or nine of them in one game. Rui, uh, first of all, what do you think made the difference for them tonight? Um, you know, I feel like a difference for you today, we, we kind of kind of got rewrites, you know. Um, the first quarter or second quarter, I forgot, but the first half, we gave them, like, you know, easy looks. It was too many easy looks, you know. Um, we just couldn't figure out, you know. But uh, we came back in the second half and – but we just couldn't even finish the game, you know, um, like the last game, you know, so that's why we lost, I feel like, yeah. 
And um, in February, you guys went on that run where you won seven of eight games. Um, what can you take from that experience, like turning things around as you look at this current stretch and, and try to get back to winning? It's like a, every position is, you know, important for us, you know, um, especially the defense. We, you know, we we had a time and we just relaxed and like, you know, we were just giving like easy looks. Um, we, I don't think we can, but back in the February, you know, we didn't, we almost like, you know, a lot of in every positions, you know, we, we, we didn't give up easy looks, you know, maybe they made a tough shot, but like, you know, that was it. But the, today, um, you know, this past couple of games, you know, we just, we just given it like easy looks, especially like the transition defense, you know, that's a, I feel like that's how we been losing. So we just gotta, we gotta fix that part for sure. Karita. Hey, Rui, I know uh, this game didn't quite go as planned, but I want to ask you with one season under your belt and into this year, you seem to be hitting a groove. How much better do you feel you're handling the adjustment to the NBA? Uh, it's actually more comfortable, you know, just this lifestyle and everything, you know, my, that was my first year last year. Um, and this is a, my second year, but almost like, you know, I think I just, I still haven't played 82 games, you know. So they still call me, you know, people call me rookie. Like, you know, I'm still rookie season, you know, so. But I just got to step up, you know, every game, the team need me, you know, um, everybody, you know. Everybody got to step up and be ready. Play every game, you know. Um, but I think I'm more comfortable, you know, just being around the team. Uh, the routine, the game day routine stuff, but especially, but this year is kind of different, you know, we almost have a game every day, you know, so, but the, taking care of my body and stuff and watching films, um, those kind of stuff, you know, I think I'm still getting, you know, make still um, having my routine and stuff, yeah. Thank you. Neil. Hey, Rui, Scott was talking about how he didn't see as much hesitancy from you when just taking your jump shots. I'm sure it's easier said than done, but what's the key to not having any kind of hesitancy, uh, you know, when split seconds obviously matter a ton? Oh, uh, you just gotta be aggressive, you know. Um, the time, you know, I feel like I was too nice. You know, give up the ball, you know, but I can, you know, I can also, I can shoot, but also I can make a place, you know, I can pass the balls and stuff, so. Feel like uh, every time I'm being aggressive, good things happen. So that's why I mean, you know, my mentality, you know, I just think like, you know, it's not only make a shot, you know, but just, you know, assist and stuff. So I feel like that's my mentality right now. Quentin. Hey, Ru, I wanted to ask you, what do you think goes into the, the fact that you guys fall down big so early in games and also in the same vein, what goes into you guys fighting back in the third quarter specifically from these 18, 19, and 20 point deficits? Because it's happened so often this season. Yeah, like like I said, you know, before, um, back in the February, you know, I feel like we didn't have the stretch like that, you know, like 18 on line or whatever. But these past couple of games, you know, we just given like, you know, easy looks, you know. I mean, I feel like the, through the whole games, we, we've been playing good, you know, offensively, defensively, but we just like, you know, like you said, the third quarter, we just given like, you know, easy looks and just giving them like, you know, like giving like a free points almost. So I think we just, we can't, I feel like we can't relax, you know. Um, we got to lock in every, every position, you know, every, every position matter, you know, for us to win the game. So I feel like, you know, the guys coming out of the bench or, you know, even the guys trying to, you know, on the call, like we just got locked in, you know, that's, I feel like a key. To win all the games. And what has been your, uh, I guess, mentality as a team on pick and roll defense? Like a lot of times, you early in the season, you guys were switching a lot. Then at one point, you guys were just staying at home with your man and going under. And then tonight, a lot of pick and pop with Bobby Portis wide open, the top of the key, and and Brooke Lopez. What are you guys doing on those screens? Honestly, it depends. It depends on the you know team, you know how we play. Um, but end of the day, we got to communicate, you know, that's the, I feel like a key, you know, when we play good defense, you know, we communicate, you know, 
either switch or stay home. Like, you know, the, like, like today, we had a couple of times, like you say, you know, just giving like easy looks, like, you know, open shot, you know, this, we can't help, you know, you know, it doesn't, you know, we can't, we can't do that, you know, we got to communicate more. I think that's the, that's the key to play good defense. Uh, Brad, first of all, how's the knee feeling after the day of rest that you had? Uh, first praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I feel good. Uh, it was just a precautionary thing, especially with the back-to-back. Uh, so we just, you know, we were just taking, taking some precautionary measures. The knee feels a lot better. My whole body feels great. Uh, I felt refreshed and rejuvenated tonight. So uh, it's good to be able to get a rest. And you guys obviously had the individual performances there tonight, but how do you square uh, this kind of stretch that you guys have been going through with the way you played at the end of February? Do you feel like there's something you guys can do to get back to that? Or, or what's, um, I guess, what's going on there? Yeah, we got to close out games better. Uh, I think just being able to defend down the stretch <clears throat> a lot better than what we have been. You know, granted, you know, you, we respect these guys and what they're capable of doing, uh, but we got to show a little bit more resistance. Uh, I think sometimes we just let guys get two feet in the pain, just finish right over us, and we can't have that. You know, we got we to gotta be a lot more better than that, myself included. Like, uh, a lot of times I wasn't active and allowed some rebounds and back cuts and things like that. So uh, it was everybody. Uh, we have to be better and being locked in for a full 48. You know, you can't play the fourth quarter like you do any other quarter. Uh, so it's just an experience thing for us and getting to understand that uh, we have to be better in order to be a good team. We have to close out games like that and build on build on things we've been doing. You know, we can't we can't circle back to the same habits that we've been doing. So, you know, we we're there, like you said, the individual performances are there. We just gotta put it together collectively. Chase. Brad, before you guys went on that run in February, you know, you know things were pretty down, but then you turned it around. Just the fact that you have done it before. Does that do anything for your confidence that you can do it again? Yeah, I mean, we've shown that we can do it. So, I mean, it's like I always say, we kind of show our hand. Uh, you know, if we're playing cards, you know, everybody knows what we're capable of doing. Everybody knows what's, what deck we have, what spades we got. So, you know, it's, we, you know, we, we gotta, we gotta do that every night. You know, we, we've already shot ourselves in the foot by showing we can do it. So, you know, consistency, like I always say, is, is the biggest thing for us. And, uh, maintaining that level of play. It's difficult. It's difficult to win in this league. It's difficult to play play at a, a super high level every night, but, you know, that's why we get paid millions of dollars. You know, we got to go out there and do it night in and night out. Matt. Hey, Brad, just following up on what you're saying about the, the fourth quarter stuff, how much of that is you guys are spending so much effort to try and climb back in the first place and is it just running out of gas kind of no uh, that's funny you say that man i actually mentioned that to someone earlier uh you know it is it definitely takes a toll on you knowing that you can put your butt off and you know you spend the most of your time trying to just get back into the game and then you kind of run out of gas at the end uh that's, that's been a trend of ours over the last few years actually uh so you know that definitely sucks but you know it's in a way, it's like a positive thing because we show fight. We show that, you know, some resiliency. Uh, you know, we, we stay engaged and in tune to the game. Uh, but, you know, I feel like if we just eliminate those, you know, 15-point, 16-point deficits early on in the game, I think, you know, the, the score would be a lot different, you know, come the fourth quarter and down the stretch. Quentin. What's up, B? Y'all have given up 125 or more in all four of these games since All-Star break. It's an average of, I think, 128 points per game you guys have given up. What has been the difference specifically in defense in this recent stretch compared to that stretch that you guys did have when y'all were playing better basketball before that uh, All-Star break? I think it's uh, no resistance. I think we're, we're allowing guys, um, you know, to more or less kind of dictate what they want on the floor, get to the paint. It's always tough when you're allowed guys to get two feet in the paint because um, a lot of the time they just shoot right over us or, you know, they're creating for another guy for kickout threes, uh, which has been our Achilles heel. So I think just being able to accept challenges more. Uh, I heard Rui earlier, we have to communicate a lot better. 
uh, lineups in which we're switching when we're small. You know, we have to we have to accept those challenges and guarding the bigger guys, as tough as it may be. Uh, but I would just say it's just a consistency thing overall, Q. Like we have to be better in all facets: our pick and roll defense, our individual challenges. Uh, scrambling around, myself included, like just scrambling around, flying, and helping the next man. You know, I feel like a lot of times we were a second too late. That's what I can say. Out of all the games we've played, we were a second too late on a lot of our rotations and steps. And you guys have all talked about Rui being more aggressive. He had, I think, 18 attempts tonight. It's the first time in his career he shot 18 or more attempts in two back-to-back -back games. What have you saw from him the game that you didn't play and also the game that you did play tonight, especially from him on the offensive end. I was crazy because uh, I was getting work the last game, uh, some treatment, and I come out and see he's having an amazing game. And uh, that's something we've been wanting. We've been waiting on that breakout game for him. Uh, and it's just a matter of time for him just to – for the game to slow down for him, for him to get, you know, used to where his spots are on the floor. Uh, you know, we put in some plays for him to give him some easy looks too. But he realizes that we you know we need him to do those things. We need him to be aggressive. We kind of need him to be that third guy for us uh, to be able to go out and and do it at every level because he's shown that he can do it. He can shoot threes. He can put the ball on the floor. You know he can post up. He can finish at the rim. You know he's very versatile, and you know we love that about him. Uh, he's still young. He's still raw. He has a lot more to learn in the game, and I think that's the beauty of it. You know he's a willing learner. And the sky's the limit for him. You can really mold him into whatever you need him to be.